गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट मिस्टर अंकित दलाल इंटरनेशनल रिटेड चेस प्लेयर एंड डियर कलिंग्स माई सर डॉक्टर भाविक सवालिया वेलकम्स यू ऑल फॉर वर्चुअल चेस वर्कशॉप जॉइंटली ऑर्गेनाइज बाय जी एल एस यूनिवर्सिटी फैकल्टी ऑफ कॉमर्स एस एम पिक बी कॉम ऑनर्स एंड चेस न्यू अहमदाबाद डिस्ट्रिक्ट एसोसिएशन अलॉन्ग विथ इम्पार्टिंग क्वालिटी एजुकेशन एस एम पिक हैज ऑलवेज बिलीव दैट स्टूडेंट हु आर इन्वॉल्व इन स्पोर्ट्स एंड गेम्स एचिव अ बेटर स्कोर थ्रू दैर एडुकेशन the benefit of learning and playing chess are teaches complex thinking and problem solving stimulates brain development we are extremely fortunate that today we have a special guest mr ankit dalal he is international rated player national instructor and committee member of gujarat chess association mr ankit will give us a guidance about the rules and regulations of virtual chess tournament and also will discuss various unknown aspects of chess i welcome mr ankit dalal to take it for thank you ankit sir good morning everyone uh, thank you uh, bhavik sir uh, a very warm welcome in 2021 Uh, uh we all know that chess has become very very popular uh, household game during the pandemic because of the pandemic uh there are a lot of streamers a uh, lot of chess streaming is happening and now we've also started virtual online national tournaments and chess tournaments let me just uh, brief a little about myself how i started playing chess and how uh, uh, what i have achieved until now so i was also a gls student like you i i studied from nr school and i was a ardent cricket fan i was i used to play cricket in and out uh, day and night i never thought about playing chess until i turned 14 and my father said okay you what you, for concentration on ball you need a game where you can concentrate we all knew that gls was always on top in terms of sports so it was very competitive to get into the team and play sports with uh, with gls so uh, chess was something where the first two tournaments i played i didn't win a single game and that that literally challenged me that oh what is this that you know i can't even win one game and then from there uh, i thought okay let me uh, let me start learning this and i started learning this i still remember at that point of time the computers uh, assistance was less um, the uh, there were very less books i mean to get material and everything was very difficult so what i used to do was i used to play from both the sides and try to understand try to calculate uh, from both the sides from white and black both the sides actually uh, and one fine day uh, i played an excellent tournament after like 6 months or so and i was featured in asian age for the full page photograph so that's how i really picked up uh, uh, playing chess and since then uh, we all know that you know gls students are always dynamic and versatile so my coach thought that i am a good player but i can be a better organizer i can be a better coach so he guided me at the age of 17 that i should start organizing events and uh, i was uh, i organized the event at the age of 17 so i got like uh, the youngest organizer in the history of gujarat and since then i am in uh, chess administration and i have lot of international achievements uh, like couple of years back i played uh, tournaments in spain i was unbeaten for 36 games 36 international rated games there so uh, i am not playing any more professionally but yes i am into coaching and administration and uh, i i am associated with uh, colleges like smtech uh, Uh, to do this kind of shows and motivate you guys to play this game further and you know play this uh, game nicely and i have achieved i think all corners in chess because uh, chess coaching chess arbitration and uh, chess is a game uh, we've done a lot and the association also has done a lot of uh, things for the game okay uh, uh, bavik sir just one thing can we have a interactive session or not by any chance uh 
sir uh, it's like it's on uh, youtube live so if at all okay. any any student has any doubt or so they yeah. may write in the comment but we cannot have an interactive session okay uh, no problem uh, i i the youtube i have i have i don't have the access right now so i'll just go along if any questions you can just interrupt me and ask me okay sure sure so let's let's start with the a little brief history of chess so i i don't know every everyone knows that chess was really found in india i mean uh, united india when sri lanka pakistan afghanistan and every bangladesh and uh, i mean centuries ago i'm talking about in uh, towards the part of mahabharata uh, so chess was found then and then it has modernized it has evolved so uh, chess is always known as the game of the kings and the king of the game because chess is a very intelligent game and playing chess has lot of benefits um, like one benefit is in planning strategy a lot of iims now have introduced chess in their curriculum uh, because strategy building planning and execution and judgment this three skills you develop like anything medical science there has been a lot of research in medical science and it says that chess helps you fight alzheimers and even if you uh, play chess at a very early age uh, there are very less chances that uh, alzheimers can develop because uh, it's a game of mind and it's it's a mind gymnasium the way we say that we have to keep our uh, physical body fit similarly we have to keep uh, our brain fit too by exercising it so chess is is kind of a uh, mind exercise too uh, chess was played by the kings to avoid wars and then it evolved into a modern game the first world champion came out official world champion came out in early 1900s and since then chess has uh, chess is evolving as a game uh, i am sure every one of you know that we have dominated this game along with russians for a long time vishwanathan anand has uh, i mean dominated on the world stage uh for a couple of decades and right now also vishwanathan anand is uh at the top okay so like he just played a tournament and he was second among all the top grandmaster at the age of 52 so we can understand the power of this game and and at 52 he is still sharp so uh, uh kudos to him and that uh, all keeps on happening uh so uh, what do you call uh chess if you guys play it may help you further in your studies it may help you in every necessary uh, necessary way so let's not take time and let's go towards the chess board for me uh, to make you understand so every one of you knows this is a chess board everyone thinks that chess is a game of white and black but chess is a game of light and dark but it's always uh, it it's always uh, kept like light and dark uh, white and black uh, the chessboard consists of 64 squares uh, 32 light 32 dark and chessboard is uh, chessboard is divided into files and ranks so the the columns you see this is the a column is called files a this is a file b file c file d file e file f file g file h file and uh, th uh, uh, these are ranks first rank second rank third rank fourth rank fifth rank sixth rank seventh rank eighth rank uh, so like we all have name all the chess squares has name names a1 b1 c1 d1 e1 f1 g1 h1 and uh, so on this is a2 square this one and all the chess pieces has names and its characteristics as i told you it is the game of kings it's always played like a, a game like that this is king queen bishop knight rook pawn again king queen bishop knight rook pawn uh, so the objective of chess is to checkmate the opponent's king you have to think like uh like that you have to go and attack this is your army 
and the army has to attack in the other den which is black uh so that's the most important uh, aspect of the game your objective is to checkmate the opponent's king now let's talk about uh, the characteristics of all the pieces uh, okay so as i said this is the chessboard and the center of the board is this four squares uh, d4 e4 e5 d5 but i always say to all my students that the center we have to consider is c4 d4 e4 f4 f5 e5 d5 and c5 so this eight squares is the center of the board now let me come to all the important characteristics of all the pieces so let's start with king king is the most important piece in the game of chess because if the king is checkmated the game is over i mean you lose the game so king is the most important piece uh in in in, in the game of chess and king is even very important in the end game i don't know how many of you knows that the chess game is divided into three three aspects opening middle and end game so in end game king is the most important piece and in the opening and the middle middle game you have to make sure that you save your king how we'll let we'll discuss and we'll let you know further first let's see how does a king walk king walks one step in any direction one step in any direction so here i'll put the pawns for uh demonstration so you'll come to know that this many squares uh the king can go on to so king can go here 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 king can move in one step in any direction until and unless there is uh what do you call uh the, the opponent's piece is attacking that square but one step in any direction now let's come to bishop bishop uh is known as a minor piece normally when we play at home we say that this is a piece where uh, it's called camel in our in our language but in chess this is known as bishop the bishop walks diagonally and the squared bishop walks in its own square so like it, if it's a light in in this diagram it's a light color squared bishop so the bishop can only walk diagonally and n number of steps so maximum eight steps a bishop can walk okay bishop's mathematical value is 3 points so there is there is a lot of uh, uh, importance of mathematical value when you play the game because when you capture pieces you have to calculate chess is a game of pure calculation okay uh, let me tell you bishop cannot jump and bishop can move any in any direction but only diagonally let's see one thing people fail to understand that chess is also a game of management so when when you play chess uh, you have to make sure that you maximize the square the squares you can attack upon so for an example when this bishop is just in the corner okay this bishop will only attack seven squares let's say 1 2 3 4 5 6 seven squares i hope everyone can see that it can attack only seven squares okay but as i bring my bishop further to the center of the board like here then it would go it would attack 11 squares 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 as i go further maximum a bishop can attack at one point of given time is uh, 13 squares everyone can see the bishop this is the maximum number of squares a bishop can attack which is 
13, 13 squares. So the moral of this thing for me showing you is that as many number of pieces are in the center, you will be able to attack maximum squares. If your pieces are in the corner, you cannot attack maximum squares. You can only defend. And again, bishop's value is three points. Let's come to knight. Knight is the only piece in the game which can jump over pieces. So knight in any, any chance can jump over any piece. Rest, no piece in the game of chess can jump. So the knight walks L-shaped. It walks two and a half steps. So two steps straight and then one right or left. And uh, the knight, uh, uh, what do you call it? Knight mathematical value is three points. So let's see. The knight from here can go to here. 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 Let me put the pawns for you. Knight can maximum attack eight squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But if you if you just uh, have a look at this knight, the knight is in dark. And it can attack only light squares. If your knight is on the light square, it can attack the dark squares. Okay. Knight's value is again three points. Let's come to rook. Okay. Bishop and knight are minor pieces. They are termed to be minor pieces. The rook and queen are termed to be major pieces on the chessboard. Uh, if you can just have a very good look at the uh, shape, the rooks, it, it, it's called rook or elephant in your uh, in normal language. But the rook looks like a castle. It, uh, I mean, if you look at the chess board, this is this imaginary 3D board. So if you look at the chess board, the rooks has been designed in the way of castle. Okay, so the rook is also named name as castle. As we all, all know that the elephants cannot jump, rook cannot jump. But let me tell you, it's once possible in the game of chess that the rook jumps. I'll let you know when. Uh, rook's value is five points. That is the reason it's known as the major piece. Rook is known as the major piece in the game of chess. Uh, rook walks slanting and sliding, so up and down. So it moves unlimited number of squares straight. All the squares. If you if you look at uh, the number of squares, it may attack 14 squares maximum at a time. Okay. Uh, rook in the center or anywhere in the board attacks equal number, almost equal number of squares. Okay. So bringing rook early in the middle game is, is very important. Uh, and rook's value is 5 points. Now let's come to the most minute. We all believe we all want to live a big life. We all think about big things. But chess is a game and pawn is a piece which makes us realize that small things in life matters a lot. It's not the queen. It's definitely rook and queen, bishop and knight are more powerful. But when it comes to the end game, mostly, mostly pawn helps you to win the game in the end game. Okay. Uh, pawn cannot move backwards. Pawn can never move backwards. Pawn only walks straight and captures in cross, in diagonal. So the pawn walks straight, 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 straight. In the beginning, it walks two steps and then it walks one, 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 one. You have a choice in the beginning that you want to walk one or you want to uh, you want to go two steps. It's fine. Pawn cannot jump. Pawn only captures in cross. So so like if you move here, the pawn moves here, then you can capture but
if your pawn is like this and if he moves like this, the pawn is blocked. You cannot do anything with this pawn. Except if there is any other pawn or piece coming over here, you can capture it. Okay. So that's the characteristic of pawn. Pawn's value is one point. Because I told you, there are eight pawns. That is the reason you have been uh, given eight, eight pawns. But the most important aspect of pawn is when the pawn reaches the last rank, okay, means here, you can pro promote this to queen, rook, bishop, or knight. You cannot promote it to pawn and king. But you can make, you can have two queens, you can have three queens. Uh, as, as number of pawns reaches the last rank, you can create that uh, pawn, uh, promote the pawn to whatever you like. So that, that's why I'm saying small things really matter in the game of chess. This pawn can become a queen when it reaches the last game, uh, last rank. And pawn's value is one point. Now let's talk about the most powerful piece on the chessboard. It's called the queen. This is the most powerful piece because it walks like a rook. It walks like a bishop. It walks like a pawn. Okay, And hence, as I told you, the rook's value is 5 points, bishop's value is 3 points, and pawn's value is 1 point. So in total, queen's value is 9 points. Mathematically, queen, uh, queen's value in chess is 9 points. But as I told you, the rook can act maximum attack 14 squares. Bishop can maximum attack 13 squares. And the pawn only can attack maximum 2 squares at a time. Okay, so that comes to roughly 29 squares, and that's what even queen, when the queen is put or kept in the center of the board, the queen attacks normally approximately roughly 27 to 29 squares. Let's count. So this is one, two. So let's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 squares, 25, 26, 27 squares. So maximum 27 squares queen single-handedly can attack. So you have to make sure that you bring your queen in the middle game to attack and position it in a better setup in the middle game. So it can attack maximum number of squares at one point of given time. Okay. Uh, so keep your queens in check. Uh, and its mathematical value, as I said, is nine points. Okay. So now let's I today this is this is actually very basic that every game has some some very special things. Chess has two special moves. I'm going to talk about the first move, which involves king, rook, and rook. Okay. So, as I told you, that king's most important thing is safety in opening and middle game. So, that is the reason this uh, Moves have been have been designed and has been given, and it can be only performed once in the game. I hope that you all have heard castling. Okay, you you all have heard castling. So castling is a special move of king and rook. As I earlier told you, rook is also named uh, named castle. So this move, a combined move of castle and king, is called castling. Now, there are two types of castling. One, short castling. Second, long castling. Why? The question is, why should we castle? We should castle for king safety. In one move, your king goes in the corner and the rook comes out. So you don't have to waste two or three moves for, you, uh, for your rook to come in the center and your king to go in the corner. So the first thing, let's let's see the short castle. So you pick the king first, put it on the dark square. On the so you have to leave one square, and then the rook jumps. I told you, rook only and only jumps 
once in the game of chess that's in the game in the move called castling so in short castling you leave one square and the rook moves two squares okay that's short castling and if you can look at the structure the three pawns are uh, protecting the king so my advice or my suggestion is not to move this three pawns very early when you castle okay similarly there is short uh, there is long castling long castling is again king only moves two squares and the rook moves three squares and there are two squares left on the left side that is called the short castling but if you look at the given position here the rook automatically comes into the, into the center okay and the king you can take it in the corner so this is short and long castling castling should be done as soon as possible in the game while i quickly move towards the uh, uh, some basic opening principles i'll also let you know how to uh, i mean uh, i'll also let you know why castling is really important in the opening okay so hang on with that thought so this is one special move now there are conditions of all the special moves the first condition is king should not have a check so if if you have a check you cannot castle you have to get rid of the check and then castle uh the second condition is the square in between the king and the rook should not be uh attacked by the opponent's piece so for an example let's say the bishop is here and one bishop is here okay you can see the bishop is attacking the square which king has to cross and go so in that in that particular thing the king cannot castle you have to block and then only you can castle okay uh, then only you can castle on the this side you have to block this and then only uh, you can castle another thing you cannot castle while you already have check so for an example this is a check you cannot castle when you have a check okay you have to stop the check uh, check is what when your king is under attack when you attack the king or when your king is under attack uh, there are three ways to get out of check i'm moving a little bit from castling now the first way and the first way you should always look for is to capture this bishop the uh, the piece which is giving you the threat okay which is giving you the threat but in this position we cannot capture the bishop so the second thing is you can block block the piece okay first is capture second is block and third is move the king which should be your last recourse is to move your king i hope this is very clear for all of you uh so these are the rules of castling yeah and one more important thing your king or rook should not have been moved if your rook has moved here and then you go back again to the original position you cannot castle you can castle on the left side but not on the right side you can do the long castling but not the short castling so both the piece should have not been moved okay next thing let's go to another special move which is called n percent n percent is a very special move it's not like castling castling you can do only once in the game but n percent you can do whenever this position rises okay so for an example your pawn is on the fifth rank so this is the fifth rank for white okay and the black moves double not single two steps from the starting then white can n percent and black has lost the pawn again i'm showing you if your pawn is on the fifth rank this is the fifth rank and black moves two squares not one square then only in this particular move you can 
you can uh, uh, cap uh, capture the pawn by doing n passing like this. Okay. Similarly for black. When your black is on fifth rank, on the board on fourth rank, and white moves double, then you can n percent. This is called n percent. Okay. I hope this n percent is very easy. It is clear. It can happen in any uh, any any rank. I mean any file. And this is, but only for this move. So for an example, if I have played this and I move here, then I cannot n percent here. No, I can't n percent. This is allowing it, but it is wrong. I cannot n percent after playing the move. Okay. Here it is a deadlock. That is the reason it is allowing. So for an example, one second. So now, if I, I have moved this, it cannot end pass it in the game. Okay. I hope it is very clear for everyone. And castling and end percent has been really, really clear to you guys. Because this is uh, ca specifically castling is the most important aspect of the end game. Okay. Now let's move uh, towards the opening principles, which I said. Uh, that I would like to discuss with you. Uh, everyone thinks why it's always the king. Uh, everyone plays this or this. Uh, there are a lot of reasons. The first thing, as I told you, chess is a game of, a game of management and you have to bring your army in front. So with that theory, this all moves were fine. So when you play e4, uh, you try and capture these two squares and you have given the way for your bishop to go out which can help you in castling early, okay? So, and bringing the bishop in the center to attack maximum number of squares. So, first thing is bring out pawns where it can give you maximum number of pieces to come out, okay? And to capture the center. So, with maximum number of pieces in center, you have to try and do that. So, black also similarly replies with the same thing. Now, the second theory, the second theory is to bring your pieces with threats, to bring out your army with threats. So when you play this knight, you are attacking the e pawn. You are saying, okay, I'm going to capture if you don't save this. And secondly, you have brought your knight towards the center. So the first thing is open with uh, uh, center capturing. And second thing is bring pieces out with threat. So Black says, no problem. I am also going to bring my knight out and defend this pawn. Similarly, I am also going to uh, uh, put more force on the d4 square by bringing my knight here. White says, no problem. Now I am going to bring my bishop out. So by bringing this bishop out, you have done two things. You've ca captured, uh, you've put more force on the d5 square. You've attacked the f7 square. And you have given the space to cash it. Okay. So uh, this is the third principle. That you bring your knights and bishops out first. And then you bring out your major pieces. So let's see. Black also replies with the same thing. Okay. I'm going to put more pressure on d4 square. And I'm also slowly and gradually going to cash it. So white has various, various moves over here. But the white says, okay, let's let's uh, attack. So white says, now I'm going to take control over the d4 square. Okay. So black says, I'm going to continue my plan, plan of development of pieces and attack the center as well. So by bringing the knight, the fourth point is development. You, you see slowly and gradually all the bishops and knights are coming out. So the white says, as I said, I am going to attack the center and I'm going to capture the center. So now, if you look at this position, here one more thing we can learn is the number of attacks and the number of defense, which is very 
essential before capturing any pieces. So when you played this white pawn, this white pawn has one, two, and three defense. Where this black uh, and how many attacks? One, two, and three. When the number of when the number of uh, defense and attack are same, you should not capture. Okay, with the major piece or a minor piece, you should just exchange and see how it comes. If there was a queen here, then this pawn would have been for free because there would have been four attacks and three defenses. Okay, this was about the number of attacks and defenses. But let's come back to the opening theory. Uh, White is trying to take the control. White has al already taken the control of the center by ha having these two, two strong pawns. Two pieces out. The black says, okay, I'm going to give you a check. Now, White has an opportunity to defend either with bishop d2 or knight to c3. Okay. So let's say bishop to d2. So it has defended, as I said, because I cannot capture bishop with any other piece. And my bishop is also developed. Another rule is you should not keep on moving the same piece in the opening again and again. Hence, here, in as a result, you see very clearly that black is has played his bishop again and again and is behind in development in terms of white. So black now has to compulsory capture this bishop and white's knight is also developed. So if you look at this development, still we are in opening, we are not in middle game. Okay. And the same opening theory continues of center control. You look both, both the parties now have same control and it's now time to castle and the game continues we are heading now towards the middle game okay so centering the rook and all the pieces on the board has developed so this is how uh, opening openings are done so i'll again repeat the theory without explaining on the board the first thing is to develop your pieces the second thing is to develop your pieces with threat, develop your knights and bishop before the queens and the rooks, castle as soon as possible, uh, capture the center, okay, and uh, try to develop, uh, try not to move your castle pawns early. You can see the castle pawns have not been moved in the opening. The opening is normally first nine to ten moves, and then you, your structure should be. In, in a similar way that you head towards the middle game. Okay. So this was the opening. Now let's come at the last part of this uh, day's event today where I'm going to quickly show you like, okay, you've done the opening very well. You've done the middle game. You've played, you, you're winning on the board. But what if you don't know how to, how to mate with a king, a queen or a rook? So a very, uh, very, simple basic end game theory i'm going to teach you but this basic end game theory no matter what you play at what level you play it always 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 helps so normally people make so much mistake of uh, meeting by one one uh, queen they do the stalemate okay here let's talk about the uh, uh, about how to mate with the uh, queen. Now, with one king and queen, you cannot checkmate the opponent's king in the center of the board. So obviously, you have to corner the king or you have to mate in the last rank. So for cornering the king, the first thing what you do is cut off. Cut off means uh, you will not let the king out of that particular area. So here in this position, the queen cuts off the sixth rank okay and uh, from d file so now the king cannot enter this area this whole area king only has one two three four five six squares to go so 
the king knows. Now, the most important part of the end game is that you have to bring your king forward. You have to bring your king in opposition. Okay. So this is called distant opposition, far opposition where king is right looking at the other king. This is called opposition. So, okay. King says, I'm going to go in corner. So we are not moving the queen until the king is right in, in center. King maintains the opposition. Says, okay, I'm going to come back here. The king goes in center. Now, this is called direct opposition. There is only one square between the king. So the king cannot come out. This is called direct opposition. Okay. So king again goes back at the same square. So now the queen says, okay, all the squares are cut off. So now I can go and cut off the seventh rank because the king cannot come here. King cannot go here, not here, not here. It has to compulsory go to the last rank in the corner. And now the king says, okay, direct opposition. Any square you go, you go here. This is a checkmate. This is a checkmate. If you go here, this is a checkmate. This is a checkmate. So this is something which helps you. Now with the queen, it is very easy. I hope you have understand this. I'm again showing you just very quickly. Just look at the board. And it's made. Okay. Now let me show you with a rook. Similarly, with rook, what you have to do is uh, first is cut off. In queen, it was very easy for you because queen can attack a lot of squares at, at that given point of time. But with Rook, it is a little bit trickier, but with this theory, what I'm teaching you, it's going to be really easy for you. So first is you have to cut off. Now you have to decide which rank you want to cut off. Here we have a space. So we are directly cutting off the seventh rank. So now king has only uh, the last rank to play. But the difference between king and uh, queen and rook is the king can attack, uh, attack the rook. So you, you have to calculate. King comes here. You maintain opposition, but here king attacks the rook. Now you have to think and count that where will I place my rook that the king, if again comes and attacks me, my king will support it. See, this is how calculation is done in chess. So if I put my rook here, next move, uh, king will come and attack me. So again, I have to move the rook. If I place my rook on d7, it takes two moves. My king will come only one one step uh, uh, down. If I put my rook on b7, so the king will take one, two, three, four squares to attack and white's king will come one, two, three, four and support. So let's put this on b7. So the king again goes to attack. The king goes further down. Two, further down. Here, further down. Here. Direct opposition, as I said earlier. Now, king has only one square. What we first did was we cut off the rank. Now, we have to cut off the files. So, simply, rook has to give the check. So, king now has to choose whether it wants to go on the smaller part of the board or the larger. So obviously, the king will go to the larger. Now, in this position, this is called a diagonal opposition. When the king is in diagonal, it's called diagonal opposition. You have to bring king. You cannot move your rook right now. So you have to bring your king near to the king. Okay. Near to the opposition's king. So black again has only one square. And to create diagonal opposition. Similarly, now 
you have to cut off the white square. The e file. The king now has only three squares to play. In. So king goes here. You are forcing the king to the end of the board. So the king comes here. King comes here. Direct opposition. Direct opposition. King comes. Only one square to go to. You cut off the F file. Now only two squares to go to. King goes here. Okay. Say I am going to come in opposition. Here. Now what? If you give check, the king will go out. If you move your rook from this rank, uh, the king, uh, I mean this, this rank, if you move anywhere, the king can go out from here. So you have to wait for one move. You have to do waiting move. You can keep your rook anywhere on this file. So the king uh, the king cannot come out here. And the king compulsory has to go in. So I'll, I'll place my rook here. King goes here. And this is checkmate. Okay. So this is how uh, uh, one rook mate is done with cutoff first rank. Then you have to uh, bring in opposition. Then you have to do cutoff files. And then corner the king and mate. This is a very simple theory. So I have touched very basic parts of chess in uh, very less time. Uh, I want to go to the tournament part, which is on 20th on the International Chess Day. Uh, so let me uh, just end this top uh, screen sharing and let you know more details about uh, this uh, tournament, which we are going to do on uh, 20th. Okay, I hope now everyone can uh, see me and uh, uh, we discuss. So I've learned that there are hundred players in your college, which is which is very good. I really appreciate all of you uh, in participating. The certificates from college, uh, these activities help a lot when you uh, go further. Even if you play chess, if you have an international rating, it helps you uh, gain, uh, gaining job and uh, stuff. Sorry, uh, uh, just a moment. Right. So, like when I, I uh, when I did my masters uh, from UK, uh, because I had an international rating, I got a scholarship as well. So you know, uh, all the certificates help you some or the other way in job uh, and stuff. And I really appreciate SM uh, Pick and Bhavik sir and principal sir that they have director sir that they have taken this initiative of giving you this education and uh, making all the students uh, play this tournament so this tournament will be played in nine rounds as i wanted to touch this part in the starting but when we were going to play uh, talk about the tournament i thought i'll touch chess is three formats like cricket now chess is four formats like cricket cricket like test match chess has classic classic is one hour 30 minutes any game more than one hour is called classic game individually so now with the new era it, uh, with digital clocks uh, every move you make you get increment so five seconds ten seconds increment in every game every move you make that's called classical format the second format is rapid format which, which is a very quick game uh, the rapid format is 30 minutes and any game which is more than 15 minutes each is called rapid format like uh, one day international in uh, cricket like t20 in cricket chess is blitz format blitz format any game three minutes above is called blitz between three to ten minutes so and the fourth like t10 still not introduced at international level in cricket chess has bullet format which is not introduced on the international which is one minute each but this tournament we are going to do is five minutes each. Every one of you will have five minutes in your clock. As soon as you move, it will take five, uh, uh, what do you call, sorry, five minutes each. The clock will stop on your end and the opponent's clock will start. So you have to complete the game in 10 seconds. I'll see and discuss with Bhavik sir if we can put an increment in this uh, uh, a tournament like every uh, move you make you have 
increment in the event okay so this game will be played in nine rounds everyone has to play all the nine rounds the best part of chess is if you didn't play one good game you're not knocked out it's not a knockout game it's a league format so you have to play all the nine rounds uh, while while playing this tournament okay this tournament would be conducted on chess.com and uh, i'm soon going to take you there is a community on chess.com for smpic students uh, which all the instructions of the tournament will be sent to you in the mail by uh, the college it will also uh, i'm going to show you how you can log in and how you uh, have to enter the tournament but uh, this tournament is at 10:30 on on 20th of july and everyone has to report and log in by 9:45 uh, you can still log in up to 10:25 and you will be paired no one can go out of the uh, tournament hall after uh, um, 10:30 uh, once it begins the tournament will take approximately uh, one and a half hours to complete uh, roughly between one, one and a half to two hours to complete i'm also going to speak to the college to introduce zoom uh, if it is possible one thing this days a lot of people know about chess and a lot of people know about chess engines let me tell you we have very strict measures that if anyone cheats last time it happened in one of the tournament that someone uh, cheated in the smpic and that was banned from chess.com so please make sure that you don't use engine and it's a fair play see no one is going to you know make a big out of it please play very fairly and do not cheat online otherwise we will definitely come to know that you are cheating chess.com itself will ban you if they find there are engine moves in the tournament okay uh, so let's let me quickly uh, take you uh, to chess.com let me share screen with you and show you I hope everyone can see chess.com. Here it is. Um, you can see chess.com. Uh, you have to go to connect clubs. You can find, I, I already have this club. So you have to click on the club and you have to click in SMPIC, which you can already see here, SMP club. And then you have to click on the SMP club. And then you have to registered as i'm already registered in this club uh, i don't have the registration button over here but you have to register and we'll accept your registration and then you will be able to play this is the link i've already created the tournament i'll make it to 20th it, show, it shows 19 but i'll make it to 20th july and we'll create the uh, event and send the links to you so you can join so uh, the tournament will be of five minutes and you can join. So here there will be a, a, a club called live tournament and then you'll have to enter the tournament. So this comes like this. And then today it's the registration is not showing open because it's on, on 19th of July, which is it is showing right now. So I can't log in. But definitely I'll show you a quick game how to play on chess.com. Uh, I'll select the quick uh, blitz format. One sec. Uh, let me X this out. New game. Three minute game. So this is the game started. It has normal move. So you have a chance to make a pre-move. If you you have less time, you can pre-move. See, he's pre-moving. Like I can pre-move. This is how it's played on chess.com. I'm not just uh, thinking it's a very uh, fast game happening right now.
So, like the pre move I was talking about, I can pre move like this. See, it's already selected. Whatever he moves, I've just done it. You should not do it because what? Yeah, see, this is this is called pre move. Okay. I hope I'm I'm stopping this game. I'll resign. So for you to know. So I hope everyone has understood how to play on chess.com. Uh, you have to find the club, your club. Uh, from this club tab, you have to search and then you have to log in. Okay. I hope you all have enjoyed this session. And if any queries, Bhavik sir, if any questions are coming up to you, just let me know, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Ankit sir. Uh, just uh, I would like to uh, talk to the viewers and tell viewers, Ankit sir has. Uh, given a very comprehensive explanation and everything. Now it's up to you. The session is open for you. You have the option of chatting. And friends, if at all you have any question or anything, you can chat, you can write down. And I will read it out to Ankit sir. And Ankit sir will be very happy to answer your queries. Friends, very quickly, if at all there are any queries or any questions, please uh, do ask right now in the chat. As you all know, the chat option is open and you've been writing good morning and all those things. But the real thing is to actually take the benefit of this session by solving your queries and answering uh, and questions. Uh, I'm afraid, uh, kids, sir, right now it does not seem the students are having any queries. Probably it's quite possible that once they actually go to chess.com and uh, have a practice session on hand, uh, at that time uh, they might come across certain queries or so. And no, no, uh, if, at all, if at all they approach us uh, with such queries, we can contact you and get the things solved. Sure. I think. Sure. No problem. Thank you for the session, everyone. Yeah, sir, uh, just wait for a moment. Uh, uh, Dr. Jaimin, uh, sir, is there with us and he would like to say a few words. Thank you very much, sir. Good morning, all. As we come to the closure of this training workshop, I take this opportunity to propose a lot of thanks to one and all who have helped in making this event such a resounding success. I think I thank our special guest, Mr. Ankit Dalal, who, despite of his busy schedule, has found time to grace this occasion and provide guidance for virtual chess tournament. Thank you, sir. We are sure that today you learned about chess notation, game analysis, strategy, and tactics. Overall, playing a chess a better way. Thank you, Kayul, sir, for technical assistance. I also thank my colleagues for their consistent cooperation. Thank you all. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Thank you.